The temp area is a little bit sharky. Reef sharks, tiger sharks, like what are we talking? Like how big? Oh, got a knife. I gotta get in there. Today we're gonna eat the fish melt, which is this part. My name is Sydney Wells, and hunting and fishing is in my blood. You may not know it yet, but it's in yours too. Join me as I travel the world on an epic adventure. This is Barcel Outdoors, presented by Rocky Boots. Jeez, I didn't see you. Didn't see you there. I'm rocking my Rocky hat today. Rocky boots, sitting sponsor. Barcel Outdoors. Sasha, you have a beautiful boat. Appreciate it. Yeah. How's, I hope you checked out how the waves are going to be. Uh, we have some. Okay. Hi. I don't know. I brought my prescription Zofran. The flag is like this, I take extra Dramamine. We still go. The trick is you take your snorkel out, you puke, you put it back on, and you keep on diving. Keep going. Great. <laughs> that will be me today. Jump in, you know, whatever. Yeah, jump. <laughs> there you go. Just bring all the sharks in. How long can you go with holding your breath? So there's two ways of holding your breath, right? So the first one is, of course, if you're diving and you're active underwater. So normally my dives are going to be between a minute and a half, two minutes. But then if you, what you do is static. So basically you're floating on top of the water where you face in, and then I can hold my breath for about six minutes, 5.45. <laughs> but it's, it's all mental. So like the fact that just being anxious in the water is the only thing that's gonna prevent you from holding your breath longer. What are we gonna do predictions? Do you think Kelly is gonna like semi-drown? She keeps hyping herself up that she can't swim. She will definitely not drown. Do you have a wetsuit? No. I like to set the bar really low. <laughs> if I say that I'm going to do really poorly at something, and then people are like, oh, you don't suck as bad as we thought. What do you think, Brett? I'm just here to save her and make sure she doesn't drown. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go down how deep? Like 15, 20 feet? 35, 40 feet of water. <laughs> I should have brought some high noon because I'm gonna be uh, hanging out with Sasha the boat captain all day at 35 feet. This is nuts. How's Sean gonna get down there and record? Sean's this? actually pretty good at diving. The temp area is a little bit sharky, so it sometimes is, um, yeah, it can be a bit sketchy. Like oh. reef sharks, tiger sharks, like what are we talking? Like how big? Bull sharks. Those are mean. The thing is, right now, just, there's not a lot of visibility. So, it's, sadly, it cannot see the shark, but it can see you. So, you just poke it with the gun and then it goes away. Okay. You just poke it with the gun. Okay. Again, I have been diving the last three or four Sundays and I haven't seen a shark. So. Okay. Sasha, what do you think? So you're there will be plenty of sharks to see. <laughs> Say, uh, do we look like drowned rats yet? Sure. Only 25 or, feet. I could probably yeah, like, so freaking can dive 15. A, a <laughs> this is gonna be interesting yeah, today. Yeah, I live in freshwater. 45 miles out. I'm wearing a 2.5 male and Sunday I was cold. Okay, I don't know what that means. You know, I got my gear. I got a knife. I don't really know what I even use it for. Maybe to kill the fish. But I feel confident with Valentine in the water with me. I got my goggles, my wetsuit, my flippers. I think like a month, two months since I've gone. So I, I, I'm like starting all over again. I'm gonna be swimming with a spear gun next to you, and you're gonna point. That's what you shoot. And I'm like, okay. Just get like a snapper, it's gonna be fine. And then barracuda, grouper. Brown or red grouper are we looking for? Both. Yeah. Okay. I'm a liar and a cheat. Okay. Somebody cheese. took a knife off my dye belt. Shit. Okay, it's okay. I have my other one. You do karate chop on the sharks. It works. It's been a while. I get these wet, right? I'm gonna put my ass in everybody's face. Asses and faces. Put it on. I'm trying to at least. I'm gonna get all lubed up, otherwise I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> you barely reach. Ah! Oh, I hate these things and I get so stressed. Oh, wow. All right. 
you take She's dry, she's dry with soap on her wetsuit right now. Your shooting range is only like maybe like three, four, five meters. There's not enough distance. Apart from if you're shooting a tuna, then because it's constantly moving, you want to really aim at towards like the beginning of the face. So then when the actually shaft goes through it, and you go a little bit more mid body. You just aim for the face. Uh, I do all the sports betting content. We have 11 states now. Kansas just went live, so I just got back from Kansas. And uh, Sydney said, hey, are you flying into Tampa? I said, yeah. And she goes, okay, well, we're going to go spear fishing. So here we are. <laughs> because you're no, so too. good at everything else. Like, I want to kind of watch you suck. It'll make me feel better about myself. Okay. <laughs> Hey, you, you can do this. It's yeah. like diving in a pool that is uh, really dark and full of uh, predators. <laughs> oh my god. Listen, only two of my friends oh my got god. bit by sharks. That's out it? of four. That's only two. That. Right. It's good numbers. I like those odds. The line that we see a shark, Yeah. probably minus 120. I would say we're definitely going to see a shark today. The good news is they're going to be way deeper than me and the shark's just going to think I'm this like chubby seal on top of the water. Probably Does that mean there's one? fish? Like, um, what's the, what's the crazy chick from uh, Harry Potter? Um, Lestrange. <laughs> <laughs> These go like certain foot. Mm, no, maybe. I gotta get in the water. I gotta get in there. Otherwise, I'm gonna die. <laughs> My boots just came out. You're a pro. <laughs> Good luck, Sid. <laughs>
This is just the truth behind everything. Does that make any sense? Water world. If I was in the movie Water World, I would be the girl with a cool ass raft that had a really nice couch where I could drive the boat laying down. I wouldn't survive a day. I wouldn't survive a day on Waterland. Gosh darn it. Cash that ticket, minus 120 to see a shark. All right, Kelly, let's try this again. Make your dad proud. Fuck off. Grab by the gill, Kelly. He's already got Don't it. Don't be a wussy. Stabbed him right in the fucking head. You want me to slice its throat? <laughs> I'd feel kind of bad. She just slaughtered his ass. Bye-bye. Don't. Valentine, you're a badass. I love it. Whew. All right, so I was sick, obviously. Try to get in the water again, didn't work. So Valentine, not surprised, held the team here. She got, how many uh, snapper did you get? Not a lot, I think two, three. I thought that was good. Really big guy, grouper, shark. It was cool to actually see you in the water, though, like 30 feet of water, I would say, which I'm an amateur, so that's pretty deep for me. She just went right down there, and I could see her just gliding on the bottom. <sighs> it's a fun sport, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of work for a little meal. For sure. Valentine and I are cleaning the snapper right now to make fresh ceviche. So right now we're just cleaning them out, getting the meat, and then we're gonna chop it up, cut it up, slice it up, whatever. So today we have a chef special. I'm gonna make you taste a part of the fish that you probably never tasted before. I won't go as far as the human because I don't wanna ask you personal questions, but um, so today we're gonna to eat the fish milt, which is the sperm. Should I say that with a French accent? And then we're gonna eat the sperm and then we're gonna fry it in the pan. Ooh, the sperm on this one. Oh, jeez. Once you have it, you can never go back. <laughs> That's sperm? No. Yeah, that's sperm. No, it's not. Yeah, it's sperm. No, it's not. Yeah, it's milt. This is actually a delicacy in China. Bread crumbs, fried in a pan, mm-mm-mm. It's a friend of mine, mainly discovered it, and I was skeptical at first, I'm not gonna lie. But it's actually really good. So what you're saying is you like to savor the sperm. I do. In my country, we make women clean fish and men clean the bones. I'm just trying not to get, on, get the ribs. Also, the knife's very dull. All right, I would normally make soup out of this, but I just made six liters, so. There's one. Got some fish scales. Okay, so you've been doing this for 12 years? Yes. Did you have like a mentor? No, so what I did is when I first started spearfishing, I like to be good at stuff in life. I just kind of travel around the world and then I went to visit kind of like the best pivot fishermen in the world and I just shut up and learned for a few years. Where is your favorite place that you've been? <sighs> so many of them. Africa was pretty special. Did you see a lot of sharks in Africa? Uh, yes. <laughs> Did that like freak Because there's a lot of great whites in Africa. Yes, yeah, so I, when I did dive South Africa, I dived a little bit north, and, um, I dove the north, so in Sodwana, there was a lot of shite, there was no uh, great whites though. I mean, I haven't seen one. Okay. Yet. Yet. And I'm not, you know, it's the, don't feel like I'm missing it in my life. Okay, so question, I've, I've been, I've watched a lot of people make ceviche. Is it true that we don't want the red? Yes. Actually, that's fine. That's small enough and it's fresh, so it's a little bit better. Okay. You want to remove most of it, but yeah. it's not. It's not going to ruin it. A few. Okay. Don't take all of it. What's your favorite fish to spear or go after? I guess in the ocean. 
Depends what I want to make. <laughs> yeah? Do you ever so go it's... into your dives, like, target, like, okay, I want to, this yes. is what I'm targeting? Yes. It's a bit of both. It's a mix of targeting a specific species and then, of course, arrange my plan according to whatever we're catching. And spearfishing is a lot like hunting, where you have to really, like, find the location, you have to go dive, mentally prepare yourself, practice, and then see if there's even any fish there. Yes, exactly. It's also very much like fishing because you, you're you down there, you're waiting, you, you, you're actually physically hunting, you know, like so you, you're hiding in a little bit. It's a, it's a mix between ambushing a fish and then getting it to get curious and then that couple of seconds of being curious, you know. That's when you go after the them. fish. So it's, it, it is very, very similar to hunting as a sport. It's way closer to hunting than it is to fishing, actually. Yeah, that's what I was noticing, especially watching you do it. Now look at this meat. It's a slab, that's a lot of meat. And it's pretty fresh. We go all day long until eight. We run like 40, 45 miles, sometimes even 60 miles, and we go in deeper spots. We go between 65 and maybe about 100 feet. What's the farthest you think you can go? Um, I cannot hunt deeper than about 90, 95 is my deepest. I can't go deeper than that. I can free dive 170, but like that's touchdown then coming back up. Yeah. To be completely honest, I don't really practice free diving by itself. It's I I like free diving, but that's spear fishing is my thing. So it's it's more about maybe like once a year, once every couple of years, I will take a free dive class again just to make sure I'm tuned up and you know just train properly and then it helps a lot with building confidence. But apart from that, it's I, I don't train for free diving. I think when I did my static breath hold it was like a minute and a half. I feel confident at 15 feet. <laughs> Valentine was on the bottom at 30 feet. I can see her like, don't think I can do that right now. <laughs> I think you can. I think I could. The problem is that also the second you get seasick, then there's no turning back. Do you ever get like a lot of people like doubting you, like how legit you are? Oh, for sure. That happens all the time. It's, you know, it's, it's, I'm a girl, so it's, some people have, you know, doubts, a tendency to <laughs> doubt the fact that we can do more things. But you know, it's I've been doing this for 12 years now, and I feel I'm a pretty decent diver. I don't know. It it is really frustrating when you see those kind of comments or those people online. I think the worst comment mm -hmm. I get is like, "Oh, you only have like the lifestyle you have and what you do because you're a girl. Like it's like you would never be where you are and stuff like that." But it's it's you know, it's I think that's that's coming from a place of jealousy for sure. It's I work six, seven days a week. Yes. You're not just doing it for pictures or likes. No. And like, I think you just said like, sometimes you don't even bring your GoPro because it's just a pain in the butt more than anything. I very rarely bring a camera when I go out. It's again with my friends on the boat. It's we're not, we're not in here to catch footage. We're not in here to, we're here to fish and have a good time. And it's, this is the seafood we eat, you know, it's, I don't know any of my friends who actually go to the store and buy seafood. So this is, it's your lifestyle. This is what we do. So we're out there and we we go non-stop and that's it. Dive, 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 dive. Now this is definitely a hobby that I can see why you're so obsessed with it. When the confidence starts bending up and you feel really good in the water, it's just so much fun. Because in case of, instead of focusing on, well, I survive. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're focusing on much more fun stuff. Like, what fishing am I going to catch today? And... What's your most memorable spearfishing um, trip, journey, adventure? Cape Verde in Africa. So I went, um, I went to film a documentary a few years ago. We went up staying close to six weeks. We were all broke, so that was very interesting. And we managed to start trading fish for different type of food. There was no grocery stores around. And uh, yeah, the first week we had to eat raw fish because we couldn't find wood or gas or anything to eat up our food. What are some like tips for new beginners or somebody who wants to get into spearfishing? A free life class, 100%. In my opinion, you cannot go spearfish without a free life class. It's for your safety, it's for your confidence, it's for the safety of people that are around you. Because yeah. it's, let's say, even if I'm experienced, it can happen. If I pass out, I need a person next to me to know what to do. Mm -hmm. Start with a free life class and then the only way to get better is the exact same as anything else. Just keep diving, go in the water as much as you can. Make sure you dive with people that are safe. 
Have it's... you ever passed out? Yes, I have. How deep were you? Pretty, that was a pretty deep dive. I was in um, 85 feet. I was in the Bahamas. I, I was using a pole spear because you're not allowed to use guns yep. in the Bahamas. So I dove down. I didn't breathe up properly. Again, in a free life class, it's, you know, I knew and I still made a mistake. Every time I almost died in spearfishing, it's because I did not follow a very basic rule. Yeah. So it's then I go down, I dive down, I missed a grouper, I reloaded my pole spear. And I was chasing in, I was spinning very hard, and then I realized, oh shit, I'm actually really deep. And then I came back up, I knew I was going to pass out, and I just could wish that my my body was watching me. And he was. But yeah, also, I almost got eaten by a tiger shark off here a few years ago. And it's, again, I was, everybody was very experienced, it was very shallow, it was about 15 feet of water, so everybody was spread out because you know at some point you gain confidence and it's easy to be like you're almost I need a buddy like I'm yeah. fine whatever you're yeah. overconfident you get overconfident that's what kills you it was like a juvenile tiger shark he was charging me non-stop and had nobody to, to help me I was curious have you ever been hunting before so I just started hunting maybe two three years ago and um, it's I kind of really also fell in love with it it was very different. My first time hunting for a deer, I cried like a baby. Did you? But then the second time I was like, huh, circle of life. I think I'm still shocked how how strong of a hunting instinct we still have. Yeah. And that's one of the things that shocked me the most when I started spear fishing. I was like, how can I, like a tiny skinny girl from Montreal, be tracking a fish for four hours and not want to give up? Like how and like, no, I don't give a shit about this. You should just go home. It's you get, in a zone that it's something that I never knew existed inside of me. You're a predator and, it's, and the thing, okay, so I took my two co-workers hunting for the first time. They've never hunted before. They were exhausted even though they didn't kill anything. And they're like, I've never, and I guess I never like thought about this because we've done it for so long. He's like, you use so many of your senses. Your sight, your hearing, your smell sometimes. Like we are so enhanced. And do you ever feel that way too with like spear fishing and when you hunted for the first time? Yes, 100%, but also on top of it, it's, it's it was like, the calories you burn while spear fishing is something between 800 and like 1200 an hour. Yeah, that's, it's crazy. All right, what's your, so what have you been able to harvest? So you've harvested deer? So I harvest a few deer, maybe about like five so far. Uh, I went quail hunting on a horseback hunt, that was, that's fantastic. Sick. That's so cool. That was so much fun. Incredible. I'm normally a very, very good shooter. Quail Hondo. They're fast, aren't they? They're so quick. I was I... like, how can I miss it? My like target is like, you know, my bullet is like doing that big. I'm like, how is that possible? I missed I about... so many quails. I haven't done a lot of upland game hunting. I shot partridge in Argentina, which are like a quail. That was yep. really fun. And the dogs are so cute. Yeah, it's really fun hunting with the dog and just watching the yes, dog it work. Is. It's, it's scary though because I'm like, shit, where's the dog? Okay, see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is there any fish that you would hope to harvest one day? Or I, I would like to get another um, a dog to tuna. Okay. That's probably, it's, it's, a, it's called dog to tuna, but it's actually in the mackerel family. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful fish. It's very, very strong. So I do want to get that. I haven't got a Wahoo in a couple of years now, so I'm definitely dying to get another one of those too. And but there are also some fish that I would not shoot again. I got a marlin. I think it was about three, four years ago in that, Mexico. I was happy to get it. I shared. I ate a lot of it. I shared a lot of it with uh, the locals too. Now I got it, and I, I I don't think I would get a second one. People associate emotions with bigger fish, I guess. So they think that it's wrong, even though I don't really see the difference between. I, I agree. You can also be a voice for people too, because there's some more people out there that don't understand than there are that, that probably do, you know? Well, if you, if you get your fish or your meat from the grocery store, then I, I do not feel that you should have a negative opinion about anybody getting their own fish or their own meat. If, if you're vegan and it's a different, then it's, it's different values, right? And then even then, I won't go into details, but 
It's not like the agriculture industry is necessarily very clean and doesn't have blood on their hands because that's just not true. Yeah. When it comes to rodent, when it comes to small animals, when it comes to insects, when it comes to destroying the land, when it comes to pulling the ocean, like the agriculture made a lot of damage as well. So it's it's if you have if you make the effort and you risk your life to go spearfish or to go hunting or to do to go gather your, your food by yourself, then I, I, I think that you should be praised. We were out for what, four hours and we got four fish. We're gonna make a ceviche and then I have a tiny little, you know, I have a nice mackerel that I'm gonna cook later tonight at home for my boyfriend and then that's it. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's yeah. going to Publix would have been A, cheaper and B, way less time. <laughs> what is this? That's perm. Oh. See? Oh, this she wants the, it now. This is the sperm? She saw it, now she wants it. I was expecting like, like the jizz. No. Look at these flays. Delish. This is the it's sperm. Sauce. Yeah. <laughs> no. You fucking bitch. Did you smack it with a sperm? Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Sorry. Not God, funny for you. What a terrible friend. How was your spear fishing today? I got smacked in the face with sperm. With, with some dick. <laughs> Fish dicks. Oh my God. That's hilarious. It's Kelly. I will go cook a beautiful batch of sperm for you, darling. And here's my review. Oh crap. Is this your ceviche review? Mm hmm Oh my. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. Valentine, you killed that. Well, no, that's like, at them. They even look like fish sticks. That's like the liquid. That's like the... That's a sperm. That's ham. Yeah, why do we just eat it raw? It's so good. Because I want to be gentle for your first time. My mom literally refuses to watch money shots because I, me and Megan drop so many f bombs. It's great. She should be very proud. I'm French. People expect this from me. You know what? I should have told anybody what it was, and I should have told you after. That's what I did when I make all my friends try Rocky Mountain oysters. I never tell people what it is. So we are eating fish farm. Never done it before, but I'm excited. It's the first time for everything. Please dig in. Wait, why'd you get the tiny piece, you little shit? Hot. How'd you eat that with like? <laughs> that was so good. I just popped them a lemon. This is really good. Kelly has a mental blockage. I'm feeling like a fish stick. Just close your eyes. <laughs> just close your eyes. It's really good, but texturized, it's kind of slimy. Bone marrow. See, and I love both Very of those. Very similar to bone marrow. That one was slimy. I'm thinking is the fish bone marrow. Except for not. I don't know if I like the slimy part. That's what I said. You got the good piece. Yeah, you got the crunchy piece. Yeah, the crunchy piece is good. The middle is slimy. The end is good. Cool. Out of 10, though. Slimy part, 6.3. No, slimy part, like, 4. Crunchy, crunchy part, part, like, like an eight. 7 or 8, yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I was going to say 10. Nothing gets a 10 in my life, I don't think. What about Brett? Welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> I give this a good 9. I like the texture. You like slimy? I mean, bone marrow is my favorite thing ever. Babe, you want to try some sperm? Things I never thought you'd ask me. Okay, so we just tried Valentine's ceviche and sperm. <laughs> Why do we keep calling it sperm? What's it really called? Milt. Milk with a T. Milt. Okay, so but we had a sperm. Like, we're honest people, that's what. Yeah, okay, so either way, it was both delicious. We had a great time. Thanks for watching Barcelona Outdoors. Follow Valentine, follow Kelly, and we'll see you next time. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Rocky Boots, baby.